Um, so next we have Johnson & Johnson's Ola. Please welcome them to the stage. Good morning, everybody. We're glad to be here with you today and with all the fellow ERG leaders as well. Amazing work being done. I'm Manny Diaz. I'm the senior leadership uh, chair for the senior leadership team for OLA, the organization, or the Hispanic Organization for Leadership and Achievement, the Johnson & Johnson Hispanic ERG. My name is Yuri Cuervo. Hello, everyone. Good morning. And I am the co-chair for our business growth pillar. OLA was created in 2001. We have right now 33 chapters and over 1,400 members across the US, Canada, Mexico, and Puerto Rico. Together, we represent more than 15 Latin American nationalities, and we have representatives across the three business segments of Johnson & Johnson, pharmaceuticals, medical devices, and consumer, and across all functional groups. All our initiatives are inspired in the Johnson & Johnson credo. We, our vision is to become an organization and a lead organization for the development of Hispanic talent for Johnson & Johnson. And we do that by identifying new and emerging opportunities for our talent, our business, and the communities in which we live and work. Across these four pillars, culture, community, career, and commerce. We work very closely with the Office of Diversity and Inclusion, and we have an executive sponsor that sits on top, working also very closely with an advisory council that's made up of senior VPs across different functions, and the senior leadership team, which I chair, and which Yuri is a part of, that houses the senior leaders for the four pillars that you saw a moment ago, and then also three focus committees on Hispanic medical strategies, a center of excellence to look at the operations of the ERG and identify and spread best practices, and then a focus also on communications to ensure that we are all connected. And then you see the 33 affiliate chapters that work very closely with the senior leadership team. So here we have one of my favorite quotes, everyone must be considered as an individual. This is in our Johnson & Johnson credo. And like I said, one of my favorite quotes. Um, where at Johnson & Johnson, it's about the individual and creating an environment where you belong. Because when you are you, we are better together. That's one of our favorite quotes at Johnson & Johnson. So everything that makes us unique is a special contribution. And being Hispanic is one part of all of us that makes us unique, but together. So you will hear about our commerce, our community, and our careers, and all the activities that we're doing there. But where it starts is with culture, because that is what's driving that bond for all of us and serves as the catalyst for our success. So at Ola, we embrace this culture and we build awareness behind each of these activities. And for non-Hispanics, as well as Hispanics alike, who are trying to kind of embrace their own culture, we create an opportunity to share our history, our soul and my story specifically, because again, it's about the individual as well as the collective. So while Ola is working year round, Hispanic Heritage Month is one of our biggest campaigns where this past year we held over 25 different activities across all of our 33 chapters that Manny mentioned. Some of these activities include, and I'll go through a few of them, the Genius Inside where we had an external speaker come in and talk to us about being our authentic selves and the value that that brings to the company. We held a Latino-style sta family feud event, invited mariachis to come and dance and sing too. And we had a single for all special event where we had people come, enjoy food, enjoy music and entertainment, and kind of build that bond among our members. Another special series we had was a passport series. And this one is where we can learn about each of the different countries that our members are from. Countries like Colombia, Puerto Rico, Brazil. And, uh, and it, it came out to be a really nice activity. Of particular note are two of my favorite activities, the Iron Chef competition and our Hispanic Day Parade. So the first I want to review with you guys is our Iron Chef participation. We had a cross ERG participation in a friendly cook-off of Hispanic cuisine. We had food like arepas, ceviche, empanadas, platanos, and uh, so we brought J&J &J employees together to, talk, to cook with our business partners in food services. We had a panel of our own judges, both internal and external to the company, and we enjoyed some laughs, some food, and a couple of drinks too. This was an after hours activity, so you know, we, we had a little fun with it as well. 
But in addition to that fun, we had over 50 volunteers that over the past five years that this event has been going on, we raised over $40,000 for Operation Smile. Now many will go over that in more detail, kind of all our efforts with Operation Smile, but I just wanted to highlight it real quick with you guys here. So the next is the New York Hispanic Day Parade where we marched with a, over 120 participants. Over the past six years, this number has been increasingly growing from 60 to 120. So you can just see we over doubled. And um, so I was unfortunate to participate in last year's event, but I was there the year before. And what we did is we marched to represent our culture, our partnership with Johnson and Johnson, and, Johnson and our service to do, our resolve to do good uh, with the community and our socially responsible partners. And again, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So our numbers continue to grow and proving that we at Johnson & Johnson feel that we do belong. Ola is a relatively small ERG compared to others, but we leverage our structure, our company structure, our platform through the ERG to deliver an impactful punch in the fight against healthcare disparities to improve the well-being of our Hispanic communities across the board. Overall, we impact more than 30,000 people from over 100 community outreach events that we conduct every year. And last year in particular, we donated more than $7 million worth of product and cash to different initiatives. There are plenty of them, as you can see, some of them highlighted on the slide. I will talk to a few in the interest of time, particularly, as was mentioned earlier, last year we were hit with uh, tragic events, natural events across many Latin American communities in Central America, the Caribbean, and South America as very all of you know well. And Johnson and & Johnson and Ola being, of course, in the healthcare environment couldn't, couldn't stay quiet. We immediately jumped into action, and starting with our co-lead, Maureen Sanchez Paredes, who's actually in the audience, we activated our supply chain and, uh, and implemented a program called Family to Family where employees could send product, food, and resources to family and friends in Puerto Rico through the company supply chain. This allowed us to distribute, again, the majority of the product donations to the island in record time, leveraging our sites on the island and, again, our supply chain partners as well. Ola also coordinated the assembly of over 25,000 hygiene kits that were distributed to impacted people in the island, in Mexico, and in many other regions in Latin America. We sent an envoy of Ola employees also in January this year for a week to help people across the island in Puerto Rico. And we leverage our, co our communications platform, our communications, our Yammer communications channel to actually connect with employees in the island even before our securities team actually reached them. As you know, the communications were wiped out in the island for a, a number of days. And uh, we were the first ones to get to those employees. Separate from that, we also have our signature program called Project Perfect. This is a program that reaches 10 to 12 children ages 10 to 12 and help them improve their healthy, I mean, inculc healthy eating and exercise habits, as well as bolster their self-esteem and leadership skills. And uh, so far, we've reached 180 p and nearly children with that. Operation Smile, Yuri mentioned, we've enabled surgery, life-changing surgery for more than 5,700 patients, most of them children that are suffering from cleft palate. And in addition to that, we have a number of med mental health educational sessions, many of them webcasts that reach over 3,000 people internally at J&J and externally as well. Recently, we have identified the synergy between these three initiatives, and we're now working on a pilot to implement a mental health program for the children that are going through cleft palate surgery to bolster, again, their self-esteem and their leadership skill, borrowing the, a page from Project Perfect, literally. So as Manny covered earlier, we have over 33 chapters, 1,500 members across 15 nationalities. And what this does is it really sets us up with a unique opportunity to provide insights on our Hispanic consumers and our patients. With that in mind, we created an OLA advisory panel that was created about four years ago, has over 50 members that serve as a sounding board for culturally appropriate uh, nuances with our Hispanic marketing campaigns. And we assist our marketing teams to be able to help penetrate their market a little bit better. 
So we have a 24 to 48 hour response rate that allows these marketing teams to really fine tune and create that final validation for them before they take it to market. Our support has supported over $10,000 in cost avoidance for each of these instances that we've supported. And to date, we've supported 10 different J&J &J brands over numerous, numerous occasions, which is very similar to that of the cost of a, of a focus group. The panel is continuously expanding into additional J&J &J brands, and it has served as a model for other ERGs to leverage. Another way that our group has accomplished our business growth goal is through our partnership with our brands and our procurement office, who we have sitting in the room today with us and partnering them with our external partnerships. On the one hand, this has created brand awareness, and we've done this through a socially responsible partnership that we've had with our New York City Hispanic Day Parade, if you remember, we mentioned this earlier, and our Hispanic Scholarship Fund, where we created seven million impressions. We drove seven million impressions through media, internet, TV, radio, press coverage, additional print materials, educational materials, and over 10,000 product samples. Particular to this activity and in partnership with Walmart, we drove an increase of 33% in sales. So one of the other great things that our business partnerships have provided us is supporting our supplier diversity initiatives. And again, we partner closely with our procurement office and we have um, spent over $257 million with Hispanic business enterprises. Ola has mentored a numerous of these accounts with their business cases and how to incorporate their communications with large corporations like Johnson & Johnson. Through the continued development of our partnership with our procurement office, we are enhancing our mentoring efforts and creating a more formal program where we emphasize reciprocal mentoring, where we learn from our partners, our suppliers, as much as they learn from us as well. So in addition, Ola leaders are, represent Johnson & Johnson at Hispanic Business Expos and facilitate connections between our top HBEs and our sourcing professionals. Now last but not least, Ola deploys supplier diversity training and broadcast success stories to enable our employees to understand and ultimately champion supplier diversity initiatives through their department sourcing needs. And moving into, co into careers, talent is key. It's the backbone for everything that we do at Johnson & Johnson and in OLA. And it enables us to accomplish all the many initiatives and the contributions that we have to the community that we have reviewed so far. So we have a very strong talent strategy that in the past used to focus on a one-year horizon. This year, we have taken it to a three-year horizon. And we have partnered with our senior advisor in HR to put it together and to align it with the HR strategy. It's acquiring, developing, advancing, and retaining employees. And I'll talk to a couple of these initiatives just to give you a sample. We have the Ola Talent Talks on their development that is basically the succession planning process within the ERG. We look at rising talent within Ola, and we pair those leaders with projects and initiatives in Ola that will help them develop and enhance skills within their development plan and give them exposure to functional groups where they want to migrate to help them get there. Also, we have the Mentoring Circles, which is an initiative that we set up two years ago where we selected, again, some of those rising talents at the director level and we pair them with senior VPs in the organization for mentoring. We have the leader spotlights that highlight who these leaders are and give them a flavor, give us everyone in the organization a flavor as to their experience, their skills, their personality, where they come from, so that the rest of the organization gets to know a little bit of them and gets to see the top Hispanic talent that we have at Johnson & Johnson. There are many others. I'll be happy to speak more with you after the presentation if you'd like. I'd like to thank the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the judges, and also recognize other outstanding ERGs that are presenting with us today and others who were nominated that may not have been selected within the top four but are still doing an outstanding job and uh, who we work with on a frequent basis as well. So thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Great presentation, thank you. We learned a lot. Um, so the same question we've asked the other teams, and you've already mentioned a few of very valuable metrics, but when you think about, okay, for next year, are you putting metrics out there to say, we're gonna be bold, aggressive, this is what we're gonna count? It seems to me that that also helps you enlist senior leadership, right? So how do you think about metrics, both quantitative and qualitative, as you go around your good work? 
Absolutely. So I'll take a first step at that. Uh, we, uh, it's definitely, if it doesn't get measured, it doesn't get done. You know the old saying, uh, particularly I'm an engineer, so I'm, I live and, and breathe data. And uh, we started collecting data a couple of years ago, I would say, to, in, to measure the impact that we have had on the organization and on the community. We started with our business uh, growth pillar, our, our commerce pillar, measuring the impact or working with our marketing partners to measure the impact of those contributions from the old advisory panel into sales and, and also into cost savings. And that's how we arrived at the 33% increase in sales from the Hispanic Scholarship Co uh, Fund uh, program. That was, uh, this is the first year actually that we get an insight into that. And so that will enable us in the future to develop other programs like that one and also to expand on that same program. And similarly, we're expanding same metrics across careers, across community as well to measure how much we're putting into the community. Uh, we'd love to get our hands on the number of hours that we are contributing, right? But we're still working on that piece. I honestly, Manny, you covered pretty much everything that I could think of. Um, we now have a interactive website that we can put all of our metrics. So anytime somebody is working on a commerce activity, they just go onto the website, put in their information, and then that's, that's where we can go ahead and know who to contact when we want to put these kind of metrics together. I have a question regarding your uh, section of community. Yeah. So uh, very impressive numbers, and so I kind of want to hopefully you can clarify um, so are these OLA specific figures? Are these J and J figures that somehow is connected to the Latino community? So how, how are you identifying those numbers? I sure, guess? we work very closely with the office. Uh, we call it the global community impact to get to those numbers. They measure the impact that we're having on the community in general from all the projects that we have. The Johnson & Johnson number corresponding to that, to that section in the slide is actually 33 million. So it's a lot bigger than that. And Ola contributed to the collection of the $7 million that we saw in product and in cash. So the $7 million didn't come necessarily from our own pockets. Uh, $1 million came from contributions from retirees and employees. Uh, but as you know, uh, you know, with the power of our organizations, of our ERGs, is to not only leverage our membership, but also our relationships, internally and externally, to magnify the impact and that's what we do. So the numbers that you see are numbers that we coordinated and helped collect, but there are contributions from the company, from employees, from retirees, from people outside, and that's the number that we helped coordinate. But the larger number is, is much bigger than that. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you again. You.